Whether you're new to the world of lasers or upgrading your setup, get ready to explore this 5 watt DIY kit from Alga Laser with my honest and true review based on real usage. Hey everyone, I'm Will and that's all coming up right now on WH Creations. It would seem that I've just spent two days working on a video about the new Algo Laser 5 Watt DIY kit for apparently no reason. When I first started using the laser, I had mixed feelings about it. I wasn't quite sure whether it was actually strong enough or powerful enough to live up to my expectations of a laser, especially because I've got my K40 CO2 laser up in my office. However, I've always wanted a laser in the workshop that could work alongside me and my workflow. So when Alga Laser reached out to me to try their new laser, I thought, why not? What, what's to lose? So when I started using it, I quickly found out that the power just wasn't there. I mean, it's only five watts and it's a diode. So I know it's not gonna be as fast as my CO2 laser up in my office. However, I put it for its paces and there were certain things I liked about it and there was a lot of things I didn't. But ultimately, when it came down to filming all my B-roll footage, where you get nice close shots of the laser and all, all those really nice bits to show you it in action, I, I started questioning what was going on because the power just totally went, totally went. I started doing some tests, cutting out some bits, and I found the quality of it, it was just absolutely awful. It was really, really bad. So I started looking at the actual laser rather than the products that I was trying to laser out. I quickly realized that the lens was really dirty, mostly because this laser doesn't have any air assist. Unlike my K40 upstairs where I've got a dedicated pump sitting next to it to feed it a really nice airflow to keep the lens nice and clean, but also as well to keep the cuts nice and clean so you don't get very many burn marks this laser doesn't have one of those it has almost like a fan system something that you get in a computer so i quickly realized that the build up of the smoke on the lens of this laser had caused it to lose a lot of power so let's say for example i wanted to design something like this santa stop here sign i would go into light burn design it up as i as you can see here and then transfer it straight over to the laser so as you can see i've made some modifications to my work base to just make my life a lot easier i decided to use some dogs that i've i bought recently to create a 90 degree reference fence that i can pretty much put any material down and start lasering straight away the benefits of using the dogs over a fixed fence is that i can pretty much move them all around to suit the kind of material that I'm using. This is something similar that I've also done with my CNC and it works really, really well. And the benefit of using this kind of fence system is that I can just click go. I've used this piece of wood to show you a little bit more about what I was talking about earlier. This was an engraving that I made probably two weeks ago, something like that. And this is obviously the one we've just done with the clean lens. Uh, I think it speaks for itself. The quality this compared to this is just unmatched really. This is just a piece of pine and it has a large knot in it. So you would expect that the engraving wouldn't be as great over this knot because it's a lot harder but there is still a really good indentation in that but the downside is that it took nearly 11 minutes to engrave just these three words now this might be okay if you're more of a hobbyist but if you're like me and you're running a business time is of the essence and time is money so realistically i could probably only do about six of these an hour and when they only cost, I don't know, five pounds, six pounds, something like that, 
it's not a great deal when you look at it in the grand scheme of things especially when you've got to pay for the wood as well so speed i think has to be looked at if you are looking to purchase something like this being only the five watts you are somewhat hindered to the kind of speed that you can do for your cutting or engraving or anything like that but i think this is a clear indication that this laser does have the kind of power to get some really good results albeit quite slow the next thing i want to show you is its cutting capabilities because it's nice to engrave but it's even better when you can start doing things like this little christmas trinkets especially if you are a hobbyist having something to cut out makes things so much easier now again we are going to be quite limited to the speed at which we can cut and because it's only five watts we are having to cut quite slow so the first thing i want to show you is a material test and you can see that here i've done a few already but i want to show you in real time just what the kind of speeds and power settings that you need to try and get these same results so i think that was a really good test about how well this laser is now cutting since i cleaned it Algo laser do recommend using a speed of 100 millimeters a minute using 100 percent power but going on this i can pretty much go to 110 i might even do another test at some stage to see just how far i can push it because i think there is that ability to go a little bit faster however this does change the higher the wattage of the laser module that you do buy so this being 5 watt you are sort of limited to the lower end but if you do upgrade it to say 10 watt or 22 watt the Alga laser do currently have then the speeds do change Alga laser have informed me that they are working on a 40 watt laser and this is hopefully going to hit the market as soon as possible as it's in its last development stages algo laser do provide you some free materials and small products in the kit and this it just enables you to get going on your new hobby as quickly as possible if you have a look on their website as well algo laser do provide you with some free drawings to get you going straight away they also do provide you a list of recommended speeds and power settings for use on a whole load of materials and i'd highly recommend downloading this laminating them sticking them up next to your laser so what am i actually going to use this laser for so the main reason for having this kind of laser is more the engraving side of things a lot of my customers ask for that kind of bespoke touch adding people's names different designs having this laser because of the size it is as well it's 40 by 40 centimeters does mean that i'm able to engrave over a larger area many makers will also have a branding iron well i can pretty much get rid of my branded iron because i can just place down the product that i'm working on or designing and i can put my branding straight onto it i don't see myself doing much cutting on it purely because of the speeds but having something that i can just start engraving on and walk away and do something else i'm not too worried about the kind of speeds that this laser has so the big question is would i buy one in essence yes i would however i think i'd actually want a better or more powerful laser module say probably like a 10 watt or the 22 watt i think the 5 watt for my needs in the workshop will fit just fine but i was ready to condemn this laser and i, sh I should have known better really because my k40 i've got to stay on top of the lenses and the mirrors especially to keep them all nice and clean so it runs as smoothly and as efficiently as possible so I think this is more of an oversight on my behalf more than anything. I should have known better. I should have cleaned the, the lens. But I am going to be upgrading this at some stage. Not in terms of sort of the laser module or extending it. Because you can buy all that stuff on their website. Or you can just choose to use this laser exactly how it comes out of the box. But I have bought myself some drag train. Because the cables on this laser get absolutely everywhere. And I'm worried at one stage it's going to snag and it's going to create absolute havoc with my workpiece. 
So having the drag train is just going to clean everything up and make it a little bit easier to use. I am also going to look at designing a way of adding air assist to this laser as well because that's something that I, I really do think is needed on any kind of laser. So being able to 3D print something to add on to this laser I think will definitely help. But this is something that I'm going to evolve over the lifetime of me owning this laser. A massive thank you for joining me in this video. If you found it useful and you think I learned it, please give me a like or even a subscribe if you're not already a member. Until the next time, stay safe in your workshop, try not to burn it down and I'll see you again soon.